I'm nervous. I'm not real concerned about that. When I go to bed, I normally wet my entire head with honey tissue. So he normally gets a little smushed down on that process. In my class at trade school, I was number one when it came to frosting and streaking. I did my own. Really? I wouldn't have known. And I can spot a bottle job within 20 paces. Well, your technique is good. And your form and content will improve with time, so you are hired. <gasps> Thank you! <laughs> oh, yeah, no time. This morning we are going to be as busy as one on paper hanger. Now, you know where the coffee stuff is? The rest of the stuff's on the tray next to the stove. Oh, here, let me help you. You've got tiny hairs and fuzzies all over you. <laughs> Oh, honey, there is so much static electricity in this place. I am picking up everything but boys and money. <laughs> Be a treasure. <laughs> and now, this is the most successful shop in town. You want to know why? Why? Because I have a strict philosophy that I have stuck to for 15 years. There is no such thing as natural beauty. <laughs> that is why... I have never lost a client to the cut and curl or the beauty box. And remember, my ladies only get the best. Do not scrimp on any plane. And you feel free to use as much hairspray as you want. There is no such thing as natural beauty. You remember that? Oh, we're both out of a job. Look at me now. Takes a lot of effort to look like that. <laughs> I can see that. <laughs> Saturday, I restrict myself to the ladies in the neighborhood. And normally that would be three. But this morning we have Shelby Eatonton. And she's not a regular, but she's the daughter of a regular. I have to do something real special with her hair because she's getting married this afternoon. Now, how long have you been in town? A few weeks. <coughs> New in town? That must be very exciting. I wouldn't know I've lived here my whole life. A little scary. I can imagine. So come on, tell me things about yourself. There, there is nothing to tell. I love hair. I have a job now. <gasps> can I take a few of these back issues of southern hair? Oh, sure. It is essential to keep abreast of the latest styles. I, I normally get my calls at a family circle, glamour, mademoiselle, ladies' home journal, every magazine known to me. You live close by, within light walking distance. I mean, I, I don't even see a car. I don't have a car. I live across the river in Miss Rosaline Forden house. That's quite a walk. Now, Ruth Rosaline, there's a story. She is a twisted, troubled soul. Her life has been an experiment in terror. Husband killed in World War II, son killed in Vietnam. I have to tell you now, when it comes to suffering, she is right up there with the lady of terror. <laughs> I had no idea. <laughs> is that a good shot? Oh, yes, dear, I believe it is. Will you plug in the coffee shop? Oh, but why is somebody shooting a gun in a nice neighborhood like this? Oh, it's to do with Shelby's wedding, little father. You'll be very to take no like the rest of the neighborhood. No, no. Morning, Clary. Oh, morning, true. I tried to call to tell you I was running late. No answer. Oh, I was at the high school. I was up at the crack of dawn. And now, I want you to meet the former first lady of Chinkapan Parish, Miss Belcher. Clary, this is a nail. She's taking you to your place. Nice to meet you. Oh, well, I'm a little bit embarrassed. If I'd have known I was meeting new people, I would have taken a little more pride in my appearance. I was at the dedication of a new football field, and not usually this wind blow. And they, they named the stadium after Cadbury's former husband, that late former husband, Lloyd Belcher Memorial Coliseum. The team have voted her all sorts of special titles. And I have the palm holes to prove it. What's your name, dear? Oh, my married name's Dupuy. Oh, I don't think I know any Dupuy's. Oh, I'm not from here. I'm originally from the Wallet. Oh, that explains it. Truly, I thought I brought you those recipes. Now, I'm sure I put them in my purse before I left the house. 
Now, Kevin, the reason I can't call, uh, do you mind if I do Shelby first? Oh, that's fine. I can use myself. I mean, Shelby is the most important one here today. <laughs> oh, that man, I swung I think the situation's worse than ever. And I, uh, I think we're going to need more towels, honey. They stacked up next to the washing machine. Sweet girl, what'd you find? Well, yesterday, when they cheated clear, I phoned her at the trade school and I said, send it wrong body. Well, she is actually very Victoria of the hairdo class, and I think this is for you, baby. Oh, why do you say that? She's married, but she's living in Luke Brooklyn's alone. Oh, now, I'd get to the bottom of this if I were you. You have some nice silverware you'd like to keep it. I'm not really concerned about that. She's very nice. I just love having some of the past. She can't be more than 18. She hasn't had time to have a past. Honey, it's the 80s. If you can achieve puberty, you can achieve the past. Mm. <laughs> Here's the cow piece. Oh, oh. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> oh. And I am. How did you make the coffee? Like you said, I put the hot water through the thing. And uh, where did you get the water? It went on the stove. You, you didn't happen to notice the hot dogs at the bottom of the pot? <laughs> <laughs> no! Let's know, please. I'm so sorry. Oh, that's all right, too. I love a good hot dog. <laughs> it's not with cream and sugar. Well, look, she's clearly not a damn relational spy. But if things work out, I may leave her with the garage apartment. Oh, I thought your kids were going to stay there while they went to the college. The waste and developments. Look, he's going to LSU now. Mm. And Pete, he's decided to work for my cousin in Baltimore. Oh. And Pete don't want to call Pete no more. Mm. My baby's a grown up. Oh, I can't believe your kids are old enough to leave a nest. Well, you know, I try to look on the bright side. At least I've some places to visit now. And I always want to go to Baltimore. I hear it's the hairdo capital of the world. Oh, look. Sure, here they are. Oh, those raspberries? Yeah. Oh, delicious. Oh, yes, and this one, the biscuit, makes it so simple. And this one here, oh, yeah, this one's from my daughter-in-law. Now, she says, you can't attend a function in tip for where this is not served. Oh, and now all the chocolate chips, are they semi-sweet or milk? Oh, milk. Okay, and a K-Rap seal, light of dog. Oh, marrow test. Okay, now come on. Where's that other one? Cup, cup, cup. Oh, that's a simple one. You don't need to write it down. So it's a cup of flour, cup of sugar, cup of fruit cocktail with the juice. Mix it up and bake it at 350 till golden bubbly. That sounds awfully rich. Oh, it is. So I serve it with ice cream to cut the sweetness. Go get us some milk paper. I'll write it down for you. And I am. Can you get Miss Clay Reese some milk paper? I believe there's some stuff on the fridge there underneath the crawfish. There's that archer boy on Green Sands Farm. Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes I wonder if Clum Eatonton's radiates enough oxygen. It is so annoying. We'll try that next door to her. Hi, everybody. Oh, there she is. There she is. There's my girl. Come on, break my name. Trudy, it is so good to see you. Oh, morning, Miss Clary. Morning, Shelby. It's not that I'm unfriendly. I'm just worried about my nails. What a pretty color. Well, I hope it doesn't dry too dark. If it's too dark, it never do. You know the color is never the same on the bottle. You will always find that to be true. I think this is drawn way I too dark. Know. Practically pink my foot. Trudy, have you got any of those nail polish remover things? Sure, honey. Where's your mama? Shelby Eatonton, soon to be like Cherie. Hi, I'm Nell. I'm Nell. <laughs> <laughs> Today is Nell's birthday. Oh, well, Nell, you are working with the best. And when does anybody get scarier than a Trudy's? Absolutely. <laughs> now, Shelby. <laughs> you know, I, I would walk on my legs before criticizing anyone. 
But your father is about to make us all pull our hair out, honey, and that is bad to my business. I hope he can't be finished with his yard work soon. Well, I hope so. You're not the only one concerned. Mom's about to have a fit. She and Daddy are fighting like cats and dogs. Oh, they're just dashes with so much going on. Oh, no, they're not. They just try to create as much tension as possible in any given situation. Mm -hmm. It's a free bed and fall. Well, now, girls, I was reading an article in Glamour magazine about tension during family occasions. Oh, it seems there can be an awful lot of stress and trauma. And the thing that I found most interesting is these stressful times can unleash a deep, dark hostility that make your hair fall out. Oh, well, they're fighting about patio furniture. Jackson and I will never fight over silly things. And now, are you married? I hope that coffee's better. Uh, smells right, anyway. Well, how pretty. Oh, Princess Grace. <laughs> Did you bring the photograph of that hair do like her nose? Yep, here you go. Now, study it carefully. And here is the baby's print. This is exciting. <laughs> I feel like I am present at the creation. Oh, baby, there's something so wondrous about the way a bride looks. I just feel its beauty in its purest form. Uh, honey, where am I going to put this? Because there's no baby's breath in that picture. Oh, you just stick it in. It's meant to frame my face. <laughs> baby's breath is part of my whole decoration concept for its holy romantic looks. Miss Clarice, what cute shoes. Oh, you think so? Oh, I'm not real sure about them. I think they're a little racy for me. I'll probably give them away. Well, they are just too cha cha for words. Well, if you're going to get rid of them, I'll buy some you. And what size do you wear? Well, in the good shoe, I take a size 6. But if saving feels so good, I buy the size 8. <laughs> <laughs> well, these are 8 and a half. your father. One or both of them are probably lying in a pool of blood right now. Did you say a nail? That's a pretty name. Unusual. I'm a lady. How is the mother of the bride? Don't ask. Why, honey, what's the matter? Oh, nothing a handful of prescription drugs couldn't take care of. Oh, you're going to let me take that for oh, you. Oh, you me, honey. You could let us have it. A nail? Can you make a start in this eating time, please? These girls have mountains to move today. Oh, ain't that the truth? I could feel color design the dance. Mama, this color is all wrong. It looks like a stuck pink bled all over my hands. Well, I'm sure I've got something back at the house that'll do. You have you got pink? Of course I have pink. <laughs> it has to be delicate. Oh, well, if I don't have anything, we'll send one of the boys to town to get you some delicate pink nail polish. Great idea, Mama. Oh, I'd love to see what Tommy would pick out. Ladies, is there anything I can do to help out last minute? Oh, Perry, you have done plenty. I think we've got everything situated. But we've just finished borrowing all the firms in North Louisiana. And the boys got home last night, so they're going to take care of all the opening. Oh. Well, I, I hope the rain holds off. I'm sorry it's not a prettier day. Oh, no, this is perfect weather for me. I like Persian well when it's still hot. I love cloudy days. On cloudy days, I feel like God's not trying very hard, so I don't have to either. <laughs> She does that profusely. Thank you, Mama. Mm, oh, he maybe bothers me. The spicy food. That makes me sweat. <laughs> Especially on the top of my head. My head begins wet. <laughs> oh, I'll get it. I bet that's for me. Hope that my mind trying to locate my body. Hello? Oh, yes, sir, she is. Hold on a second. Mama, it's your husband. Yes, sir. I don't know. I don't have it. I don't have it. Oh, Drum, if you're trying to drive me crazy, then you're too late. For the last time, I don't have it. Ask the boys. Goodbye. What did Daddy want? Nothing. Now, so we're going to sweep it up and leave some softness around your ears. Oh, sweep it up. Yes, Mama, up like Princess Grace. Did you bring Trudy the picture of Jackson Smith? No, I brought the picture of 
Princess Grace. I destroyed the picture of Jacqueline Smith. But I thought I had talked to you about the advantages of a Japanese bit of hairdo. No, Mama. Well, at least I talked her out of that stupid idea of putting baby's breath in her hair. Back to the hair, please, Truby. <laughs> Truby, can I borrow uh, your recipe for strawberry pie? Oh, sure. Shady, though. Shady, your mama doesn't taste much. What's Jackson like? Oh, well, he's pretty swell. I, I thought he was a past that first, but then he kind of grew on me. And oh. now I love him. Where did you meet him? Oh, at the Trillium Club in Shreveport. I had no idea who he was, but I was getting a kick out of watching him on the dance floor. Oh. It was painfully obvious he had never taken the time to dance in front of a mirror before. <laughs> there was something so attractive about how stupid he looked. <laughs> Is he real romantic? I don't know, but he does give me flowers and little presents if I bug him enough. Oh, he's also promised to give me a red rose on every anniversary corresponding to that anniversary. I think that's so sweet. Well, that is a pretty romantic idea, isn't it? Yeah. I just wish it would have been his. <laughs> Lloyd and I listed of 40 years by three months. Oh, that's stupid. Bless his heart. He tried. He just couldn't make it. You remember your wedding? Of course I do. I remember everything. The flowers, the food. Weezer was my maid of honor. Oh, Shelby. I hope you and Jackson are as happy as Lloyd and I were. We had such a good time together. Until last November. Oh well, at least he hung on through the state playoffs. We miss Clover together still good times to be had. For sure. But I miss the whirlwind of being a mayor's wife. It's not easy being just one, and I don't like only things of my own. If I go with another couple, I'm a third wheel, and if, uh, if I go with a friend, we're like a couple of old biddies. Well, somebody like you should be able to find something to occupy your time. Well, I do really love football, but it's hard to parlay that into a reason to live. Harry, you are a woman come to terms with her griefs, but you and I are in the same boat. My two boys live in town, and I have a husband that has moved his butt from in front of the TV set in 15 years. <laughs> It's up to us to figure out what we want to do with our lives. And that's the end of today's sermon. <laughs> now, Shelby, are you and Jackson, are you going to live in West Monroe or Monroe proper? Monroe, of course. His law practice is there. Oh, you are lucky, Shelby. Louisiana employers do well, whether they want to or not. Oh, well, I don't really care. Now, don't get me wrong, the money's real nice, but I just like the idea of going over with somebody. My dream was to grow old and sit on the back of the porch being surrounded by grandchildren shouting, No! And stop that! <laughs> oh, are you going to quit nursing, honey? Oh, no. I love it. I love being surrounded by all those babies. Last week we had this poor little fellow, two and a half months premature. And he looked like a big rat. I kept talking to him and holding him. I knew he wasn't going to make it. Drew and I feel that Shelby shouldn't work after she gets married. Well, I am so anxious to discuss this topic for the 900th time this week. <laughs> you should not be on your feet all day. You should be kind of your circulatory system. And now, I know you're new and all, but don't let that stop you. Anytime you have anything to say, just let it rip. I don't have anything to say. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now, <coughs> at my limb, it looks like you're ready to roll. Color looks divine today. And uh, do you think we could trust Anaya to roll you up? Uh, Anaya, uh, do you think you could roll up this evening, Carl? I don't know. Today is very special, and my work tends to get poopy when I'm nervous. Does your dress have to go over your head? Oh, you can't ruin her hair. You just tease it until it looks like a giant football helmet. I do not recall the passage of the Emily Post that said that all of you should be heaped on the mother of the bride. You go ahead, Anel. I am sure you do a wonderful job. Doesn't matter what I look like anyway. Hush, my ladies. Come on, tell things about the wedding. How many bridesmaids? None. None? Good Lord. Exactly. I tell you, I hope they photographer brings a live angle in. Well, I think it's embarrassing and awful. But Mama made me have all of my cousins and Marjorie St. Maurice. There was no way around it, Shelby, and you know it. Oh, it'll be pretentious. 
And Daddy always says, Nancy, if you change it, it's worth a pound of manure. Oh, the poet laureate of Dogwood Lane. <laughs> I wish you would get up Daddy's back. And so, and Shelby, what are your colors? Blush and bashful. Her colors are pink and pink. My colors are blush and bashful. <laughs> I asked you, how precious is this red going to get? My colors are blush and bashful. I've chosen two shades of pink. One is darker than the other. Well, the bridesmaid dress is all beautiful. Oh, and the ceremony will be too. The, the walls are banked with flowers and sprays of flowers in the shades of blush and bashful. There's a pink carpet specially for the ceremony. Oh, and there's pink silk button draped over anything that stands still. <laughs> the sanctuary looks like it's been holed down with half a bibble. <laughs> I like pink. I try to talk to her about peach and cream. Peach is so lovely this time of year. All the azaleas in our garden are peach colored. Oh, peach is so flattering to every skin tone. Oh, no way. Pink is my signature color. And what color is your dress, my lady? Oh, peach and cream. <laughs> and plate green? Oh, my. Beige lace to the knee. Well, I am wearing a sexy blue chiffon. Oh, Shelby. Jack's gonna take one look at me, honey, and leave me behind the bed. <laughs> <laughs> well, Mama's dress is gorgeous. It costs more than my wedding dress. Oh, it did not. It was on sale. That's what she told Daddy. What she actually meant is that it was for sale and not on sale. <laughs> Hello. Oh, hi, Janice. Yes, I heard. Yes, I know it's an emergency, yeah, but, but, but today I'm doing Shelby. But tomorrow? But tomorrow's Sunday. Oh, okay, fine. I'm by the church. True, but you shouldn't give up your Sundays. Cavity, you know how neurotic Janice Lane Meter is about her appearance. And now, Janice is the current man's wife. We hate her. <laughs> Now, come on, tell me things about the, the wedding and, and your honeymoon on the reception. Well, there'll be ferns and twinkly lights. There'll be magnolias in the pool. Well, I do hope your father don't get such dandy magnolias from weeds this side of the tree. We will never hear the end of it. The wedding cake will be by the pool, and the groom's cake will be hidden in the carport. Oh, now this is something that Shelby and I do agree on. The, the groom's cake. Oh, it is awful. It's in the shape of a giant armadillo. An armadillo? Jake's a woman cake in the shape of an armadillo. His aunt makes them. Oh, well, it's unusual. It's repulsive. It's got gray eyes. I mean, I don't even know how you make gray eyes. <laughs> Worse, the cake part is red velvet cake. Blood red. People are going to be hacking into this animal thinking it's bleeding to death. <laughs> the rehearsal dinner, now that was an experience. Well, it wasn't that bad. It was out in Jackson's uncle's place on the river. They served steak and baked potatoes. They ran through an awful lot of trouble. <laughs> this family just loved to barbecue. And for dessert, they served an original creation called Dago Pie. Yeah. I think that says it all. <laughs> Jackson is from a good old Southern family with good old Southern values. You either stub it, shoot it, or marry it. <laughs> they are simply outdoorsy, that's all. Did Jackson need a suit to anything especially romantic? Well, we drove down to the Frenchman's Point and went parking. Oh, she'll be no. Then, I love this. It's the romantic part. Now, come on, because this really melts my butter. Well, then, we went skimmy dipping and did things that frightened the fish. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's been a long time since we've had a youngster in this place, hasn't it? Oh, and we talked and talked. I love those kind of talks and yawns that made me love. Actually, we fought most of the time. What? Well, because I told him I couldn't marry him. What? Oh, no, don't worry. We worked it all out. Oh, it's only one of those little last minute jelly things. No, but the wedding is still on. Oh, well, thank God for that, because this is going to be in the Hairdale Hall of Fame. Oh, you frightened the shit up, but that wasn't a nice thing to do to your mom. Now, you should never say something like that to a woman who's marinating 50 pounds of crab claws. <laughs> oh, but they can, uh, they can be extremely romantic. I miss romance so much, Clavy. Oh, Trudy, it can't be that bad. Clavy, 
the lowest remaining thing my husband did for me was in 1972. <laughs> he imposed this car port so I could support him. <laughs> Very nice, Neil. I think you know what you're doing. Thank you, Miss Nathan. You have great hair and your scalp is as clean as a whistle. <laughs> My lead it must run in the family because oh, Shelby has such lovely pink hair. It's just so pretty. Oh, now, Shelby, you put your hand up what you do. Stop it. Oh, Shelby, Shelby, my lip. Oh, honey. Oh, I'll get some juice. Did you get some candy in my purse? Oh, I have a peppermint one right here. Shelby, we're getting you some juice. Well, I gave her the cookie. Here's the juice. No, juice is better. Now, Shelby, we need to drink some juice. No, leave me alone. <laughs> drink the juice, honey. You told me. No! Oh, who can blame her? The juice after a peppermint. Oh, stop it. I have candy in my purse. Honey, you didn't bring your purse now. Drink. <laughs> there we go. It's done. Excuse me, should I call the doctor? Oh, no, honey. No, no. no. Our Shelby's a diabetic. So she's just got a little too much insulin. That's all. She'll be fine when we get the linen break. I'm going to leave that. You don't leave me alone. <laughs> I'd like to see you try. Now, Shelby, cooperate. Drink. Drink, honey. Please. There we go. That's better. Well, that one hit her hard, isn't it? She's on a pill at the moment, and her hormones are running wild. She'll get back on an even keel soon enough. Oh, but she could hurt herself. What if this happened when she was driving a car? Perhaps that's why I have so much gray hair. You know, Shelby, as long as I do, I have to let her be strong. She doesn't seem to be down too deep. Talk to her, Shelby. Oh, oh that's good enough. She and Jackson have been so upset lately. They've been going round and round. Dr. Machine said at their last appointment, the children wouldn't be possible. Not the easiest thing in the world to sit there and watch a child's heartbreak. Don't talk about me like I'm not here. There we go now. She's making some sense. And I think we'll have a little more juice. Not do something, should I? No, no, no. She'll be fine. She probably won't remember anything. Now don't fuss over her. She's normality is very important, Shelby. My Liam, I'm so sorry to hear about the children part. I know. She thinks that Jackson is missing out on his chance to have children. They talked about it and he thinks they have taken it well, but it's Shelby that's pushing the issue. He's crazy about her and he said, shut up, don't be stupid. There's plenty of kids out there that need good homes. We'll adopt ten of them. We'll buy them if we have to. Oh, yes, he sounds like good people to me, honey. Huh? <laughs> You're right there and then, but if he was dumb enough to spend the rest of his life with me, then I was dumb enough to marry him. Oh, no, no. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay, honey. It's okay. It's okay. Hello. Oh, hi, Tom. Hi. At my land. It's Tommy for Shelby. Honey, he wants to know where your car is. Oh, absolutely not. That's the honeymoon getaway car. He just wants to file it. Jonathan said he's been filing with us by the case. <laughs> She'll have to call you back. Thank you, Mama. It's okay, sweetheart. Now, come on. Sit up straight. You got a gilby lily. Now tell me you're going to take it down after the reception because I'd be happy to give you a touch up before you go on the honeymoon. No, I'm going to leave it up as long as possible. Okay, honey, come on. Tell us about the honeymoon. I am perching frothy tall. No life for days. Secluded. Some place you can be in and out of bed. <laughs> Las Vegas. Well, the weather is nice there. Like living in a glove <laughs> Shelby, about what Jackson said. I'd rather not talk about it, Mama. What happens in my life is between Jackson and me. I will take care of Jackson, and he will take care of me. You can't blame people for being concerned about you, though, darling. About what Jackson said about children. Gosh, it was wonderful. And very wise. It's no disgrace not to be able to have a baby. Shelby, did you hear what I said? Mama, I know all about these doctoring proceedings. 
and I also know one of the patients that's body of mine. I would never do anything stupid. Finally, you're listening to reason. Now, Shelby, come on, you're gonna have to start separating this baby's breath out. Oh, Shelby, no. It's my wedding day and I can stick baby's breath up my nose if I want to. <laughs> yes, no. Fine, fine. I'm supposed to be the expert in behavior and I can't seem to manage my own family. Oh, Mama, did you tell them yet? Tell us what? <laughs> oh, really? I might be promoted to administrator of the Magic Garden Center. Oh, wonderful. Why, well, that garden center does such great work for the disturbed. <laughs> I wish I'd seen my boys fail when they were little and got them straightened out. <laughs> I should have known they would have problems when his imaginary playmate stopped playing with them. <laughs> <laughs> Your boys grew up fine. They were just a little scary, that's all. No, my lady. Tell us some of your most bizarre mental cases. <laughs> Let me play. We work out who they are. <laughs> There's so many sick tickets in this town. <laughs> I will not discuss all symptoms in a social setting. Oh. People need a place where they can come and unload their problems. I would never violate their confidence. Ooh. When Mama says she doesn't talk, she means it. She's like a brick wall. Well. As some always say, if you can't say anything nice, come sit by me. <laughs> Do you realize we are being rude to poor Annette? L R N L. She doesn't know us from the outside step, and we keep talking about things far in our experience. And Nail, tell us about yourself. Here's Lily Mattel. Where do you live? I'm on the corner of Jefferson and Second. Which corner? The one where you can't see the house because of the weeds. Oh, you must live in the She's my landlady. Oh. How are you getting along with her? What's the matter with her? <laughs> well, I just wonder, are you happy then? She scares me. She's always watching me. I even caught her looking through my keyhole. Oh, dear, dear. Don't worry, honey. She's probably not taking her medication. I'll check in with her on Monday. <laughs> Shelby, you want to finish that juice? I'm fine, Mama. You finish it. Oh, please, Shelby. Finish the juice. It's going to be a while before the bridesmaid's luncheon. Trudy, you know what you need in here? You need a radio. Music is so good to have in the background. Oh, and it takes the pressure off of having to talk so much. I had one. Oh, I smashed it against that wall when I couldn't figure out where the badger's went. I know now. I was a victim of premenstrual syndrome. Well, I brought four of them as wedding presents. I'll give you one. Oh, half sleep. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, and what did I just hear? The Antilla family are selling KPPD. I wonder how much radio stations sell for. Not a lot, but a small town radio station is a license to print money if it's run right. Miss Corey, you should buy KPPD. You got plenty of money. Oh, what would I do with a radio station? Business never inter inter interested me. Molly took care of all of that stuff. Shelby, why don't you finish up the juice, honey? Don't worry, she'll be fine. But I always carry some candy in my purse just in case. Oh, wait, 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 my lamp. Take some of the butterscotch there in that jar. Oh, uh, put some in her bag, Harry. They are the best. So they start out real hard. But once you suck them cold enough, they get real chewy. All my favorite things. <laughs> Crunchy and chewy and buttery all in one. <laughs> Delicious. Melan, you always carry candy in your bag? <laughs> Without fail. Then tell me something. Do you suck on this often? Oh, I can't put that back. <laughs> I just hate when people bring their weddings in my shop. How did you get Debbie's gun away from them? I have been waiting all morning for my chance to finally put it down and go to the bathroom. Excuse me, can I ask you a question? I know I'm new here and all, but uh, is my life in danger? <laughs> <laughs> no, honey, my lens, husband's run, he's been just shooting at some birds. The trees around here are full from this time of year. See, our yard is full of fruit trees, which are full of birds. Daddy's been trying to make loud noises to scare them away. I didn't want guests in my reception to be spending all night dogging bird shit. <laughs> Pretty talk. Do you have to be so crude? 
the neighborhood and step to the tide. We the Boudreaux blame that my husband's gunshot for the problems of that mangy dog of hers. She said that all the noise has caused him to lose his hair. My land, you're not taken by gun with anxious folks, Junior. Oh, I know. Well, what if he comes here and tries to get his gun back? <laughs> Drum would never come to a beauty shop. <laughs> He's in women's territory. He thinks he's wearing my naked or something. <laughs> I'll be with you in a minute, Clary. Oh, don't worry, Dan. I'm just here for the coffee. <laughs> There's somebody coming. A strange lady with a strange dog. Oh, that will be Weezer. Lord help us. This is it. I found it. I'm in hell. Mother Weezer. Don't try to get on my good side. I don't know. Well, you're a little early, you know, too, too late. And that's precisely why I'm here. I have to cancel. I have to take my dog to the bed. dogs! Lori has a nervous breakdown. The dog, I mean, the vet's perfectly healthy. You must be the new girl. Huh? Fetch me a glass of water, darling, because I've been screaming all morning. Lisa, I'm sorry. This is just out of hand. It's not your fault, Lynn. I used to think you were crazy for marrying that man. Then I thought you're just a glut for punishment. Now I realize you must be on some mission from God. <laughs> oh, I haven't slept in days. And I look like a dog's dinner. But I swore when I woke this morning, I would rise above it, starting in. All I know is my poor animal has a condition that has to be sedated. Are you sure that's true? Red is a very old dog. I'm just going on what the vet tells me. I'm which vet? Why did black? Poor oh, Vic was your first mistake. Why did black is a moron? I don't, I'm not even sure he has opposable thumbs. <laughs> that hurt Miss Weezer. Daddy's not trying to drive you crazy. He's just trying to make my reception nice. That's all. His heart's in the right place. But he cannot do this to my dog. My dog is on his last legs. What am I going to do with that poor animal? Well, I've got some nice recipes here you can try. <laughs> Whatever your name is, you ever look out the window and check on my dog while I smack Clary in her smart mouth? You may not realize this, but these are supposed to be some of the dearest friends I have in this town. Well, his color is good and his skin is real and pink. Well, I know for a fact that there will be no more gunshots. He pointed a gun at me! They were blank, Weaver. My husband would never point a gun at a lady. Oh, he's such a gentleman, all right. I'm sure he gets the dishes out of the sink before he has a pee in it. <laughs> Weaver, would you ever relax and have a cup of coffee? Now, ladies, okay, I am ladies from the Shelby. And a nail. Can you shampoo Miss Weasel? See now, ladies, life can be wonderful. Oh, all right. As long as there's no more gunshots, I'll stay. Oh, what did you say your name was? Well, oh, I haven't seen you about town before, and I know everyone looks famous. I moved here not too long ago. Oh, I'm with your family. I don't have any family to speak of. Oh, your husband? My husband? <coughs> it's hard to say. I don't know. You don't know? Well, I'm not sure. Uh, I'm intrigued. That's not a difficult question. Are you married or not? Uh, we're not. He's not. I can't talk about it. Of course you can. can. Well, I don't know if I'm married or not. He's gone. Oh, honey, man, are all horrible creatures. They should all eat shit and die. <laughs> oh, look, everything is horrible. Funky, that's my husband. We moved here just last month and he vanished last week. Oh, and you've no idea where he went? No. He took all my money, my jewelry, the car, most of my clothes are in the trunk. Oh, honey, but there might have been some foul play. Have you been to the police? No, but they've been to me. He's in big trouble with the law, drugs or something. Oh, and he never paid the rent on our house, so I got thrown out and had to move into crazy old with Rosalines. The police keep questioning me, but I don't know anything. They say my marriage might not even be legal. Oh, honey, you, you should have said something. I was scared to. I didn't know if you'd hire somebody who may or may not be married to someone who may or may not be a dangerous criminal. <laughs> oh, but I promise that my personal tragedy will not affect my ability to do good hair. Of course it won't. Oh, you're all so nice, but I don't think things could get much worse. Of course they can! <laughs> <laughs> Everything is so 
all wrong. Checks are bouncing everywhere. You can't be alone. I think that's the most they want me. We are awful. We are hateful, awful people. Here, what we've been talking about is winds and psychotic animals. We can tear you up inside, haven't we? I can't tell you how sorry I am. Sometimes we just don't know how lucky we are. Is there anything we can do to help? Oh, well, I know one thing Dad'll do. You're gonna stop by my house and have some bleeding armadillo grooms cake. <laughs> It'll be a great party. Oh, I don't know. I still get real emotional sometimes. Well, I can't stand the thought of someone being alone tonight. And if you feel yourself getting upset, just watch my husband dance. Oh, Sounds you very funny. <laughs> you really are all so nice. <laughs> we enjoy being nice to each other. There's nothing much else to do in these times. Not to worry. I bet I'll have something they'll do. I'll just call the house. <laughs> and now, if the green traced it, my my apartment, it's it, it's it's gonna be available soon. My son Pete is living there now. But give me a few days to sweep it up and clean out the bay and you come on over and take a look at it. I'm sure we can work out something at the ranch. Oh, thank you. <laughs> oh, good, Jonathan. You have to do me a favor. Yes, now. Uh, go in my closet and bring me three or four of my Sunday things. Use your judgment. Fine. Bring the pink dress with the white collar, the pink dress with the cherry pin on the jacket, and the pink white polka dot dress. No, Jonathan. Mama doesn't have Daddy's gun. Don't you have better things to be doing? What? Oh, well, stop him! Now! Is something the matter, honey? We'll see. Oh, what the hell? What happened? Oh, Daddy's hot explosives on Jonathan's old G.I. Joe bow and arrow and shot him into the trees. Shut up, Brad! Oh, I hope I'm hurt. Well, there is birds flying everywhere and smoke filling up your backyard. Look, it looks like drum said this tree's on fire. I know that or he's elected a new pope. Oh, I guess it's working. All the birds are leaving. Oh, I'm going to let that man have it. Oh, no. Miss Weezer, your dog just broke his chain and it's running the horse will smoke. Weezer, that dog will eat from a lot. I drove it that arm. Oh. Weezer, do something. Weezer, when you call your dog, he listen to you. Weezer, please, it is my wedding day. Say something to your dog. Oh, kill Red, kill. Jonathan came home yesterday morning. Oh, he loved his class. That's all he talked about. Although I do believe the one thing that he had learned from architecture school was how much he should hate his parents now. <laughs> oh, Tommy came home last night and immediately started terrorizing your father. I'm so happy to have you all home for Christmas. Well, some things never change. <laughs> how are you, honey? Oh, I'm good, Mama. Just great. You're looking well. Did you ask the back of the house? Oh, no, you know how twitchy he gets, so I sent him up to look for stocking stuffers. <laughs> Good idea. Well, actually, Jackson, I have something to tell you. We wanted to tell you when you and Daddy were together, but you're never together, so it's every man for himself. I'm pregnant. I'm, I'm going to have a baby. 
lady? I really like that. Is that all you're going to say? Why do you think it's that? I don't know, something along the lines of congratulations. Congratulations? Would it be too much to ask for a little excitement? Not too much now. I would want you to break the sweat a little bit. I didn't say the shock. In June? Oh, Mama, you had to help me when? Jace and I were going to buy a new house. We're going to go have something next week. You know how he loves to hunt for anything. Mm -hmm. But what did Jackson have to say for that? No, he's so excited about the whole thing. Oh, he swears he doesn't care if it's a boy or a girl, but I know he wants a boy so bad he can taste it. Oh, that's all he can talk about. Jackson, let's read Junior. But does he listen? But when the doctors and the specialists give you advice, I know you never listen, but does he? Well, I suppose since he doesn't have to carry the baby, it doesn't concern him. Mom, don't be mad. I couldn't bear to hear why it's Christmas. I'm not mad, Shelly. Just hard on him. Mom, I want a child. Your poor body. Shelly, you've been through so much. Mama, diabetics are healthy babies all the time. But you are special. There's a limit to what you can do. Mama, I know. I know. I don't need no help to hold this through. You can't live a life if all you do is worry, and you worry too much. In a way, it's like a comfort to me. I never worry because I know you're worrying enough for the both of us. Jackson and I have been this a lot apart. I need your support. And, and by this time next year, I'm going to be bringing a big, healthy grandbaby to the Christmas festival. No one's going to be hurt or disappointed or even inconvenienced. Least of all, Jackson. Oh, don't start on Jackson. You are so jealous because you no longer have a say in anything I do, and that drives you up the wall. You're ready to spit nails because you no longer call all the shots. I did not raise my daughter to speak to me like this. Yes, you did. Whenever any of us asked you what you wanted us to be when we grew up, what did you say? What did you say? Jerry, I'm not in the mood for games. What did you say? Mama, just tell me what you said. Answer me. I said all I wanted was you to be happy. When I would, but I can't. I'm gonna have this baby. I just wish you would be happy too. Well, I wish that. Oh, I don't know what I wish. Mama, I don't know why you have to make everything so difficult all the time. I look at having this baby as an opportunity of a lifetime. Sure, there may be risks involved here, but that's true for anybody. But you get through it, and life goes on. And when it's all said and done, there were little pieces of immortality running around with Jackson's looks and my sense of style. Mama, please. I need your support. I would rather pretty man to one or than a lot of pretty nothing. Oh, no, don't tell anybody yet. I want to tell them first. Truly, they're on. Well, look who's here. Give me a hug right here and love <laughs> Merry Christmas, Ruby. <laughs> oh, ho, ho, ho. Hey, <laughs> Leo, we have the special mystery guest. Honey, you are just in time to light our tree of beauty. Oh, how precious. And what a novel idea to trim it with better things. Well, our little nail has quite the eye for the unusual. Hi there. And now you did all of that out there. Yeah, guilty. <laughs> True, we just handed over the decoration responsibility to me. I love things, and I despise the commercialization of Christmas. So I went down to the fire sales of Baptist Bookstore in Shreveport last month, and they have loads of mismatched manger scenes at incredibly low prices. So I cleaned them out of baby Jesus, which Truby's husband helped me modify the ornaments. So soon we'll just tiny white lights, baby Jesus, and foolies. My husband, he cleaned our poop's old room for a little a workshop for her handicraft. 
The little girl she called him was gone so quick. Oh, that's nice. Are your boys coming home for Christmas? Um, uh, no. Uh, but Lily did bring home his girlfriend, Thanksgiving. Nicest thing I can say about her is all her tattoos are spelled correctly. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I guess it's just me, the old man, my little man. Uh -huh. <laughs> well, come on now, Missy, you can be blessed and be honest. I like the tree of you this. I hope it don't blow up again. <laughs> oh. oh, see, I know what I'm doing. I know your mama is just so happy that you came in early for the festivities. It's going to be the best ever. Uh, there's going to be more lights. And th there's going to be an activity made entirely of sparklers. And then they, they have this sign on the riverbank. That says, I heart you found out. <laughs> Guess who the Grand Marshal of the Parade is? Who? Wayne Newton. Uh, well, I will be missing the Christmas festival for the world. Mama, while I'm thinking, I brought some of those chocolate chair cheesecakes for our open house. They don't sound like they got food to make. Oh, no, they're about size like this. And I told you no best. And they're perfect. And Mama, I've been clearing out the closets, you know, getting rid of things. I brought you some things that I don't want, things I'll probably have worn. I thought your patients might feel less disturbed if they had something stylish to wear. <laughs> and now, the counter. Excuse me, Shelby. If you don't have any special plans for those clothes, uh, could I have them? Riverview Baptist has a clothes closet for the poor, and we are real low on women's dresses. Oh, sure, that's a wonderful idea. There is a car. I'll get him in a minute. We were a little disappointed that she wouldn't go to my Methodist church with me. I just feel Riverview Baptist is a little too praise the Lord for my taste. Some of them do get a little carried away, but there is nothing wrong with that. Oh, no. Some of Mama's patients are born again Christians. I mean that only in the best sense of the world. Well, we are just so happy that our little man has settled down. She's had a rusty couple of months, hasn't she, honey? Oh, well, after they put Bucky to sea behind bars and I was rid of him, I went wild. I was running around drinking, smoking. Jezebel. <laughs> Truly helped me see the error of my ways, and uh, I realized I have something to offer. So I joined a church last month. <laughs> Oh, and Truby helped me see our talent, so I gave uh, lectures on beauty at the trade school. <laughs> our little Anaya, she has become the hottest ticket in town. <laughs> yeah, I'm enjoying the city more. Oh, I wanted to go to the Christmas festival all my life, and now I live here. <laughs> <laughs> well, now, Missy, <coughs> tell us when you have a date with. <coughs> Truby, will you hush? Come on, Missy. Shelby's pretty much totally responsible for it. Henry DeSoto. Oh, my lamb. He has a body, don't stop begging me. <laughs> How am I responsible? He was bartending at your wedding last spring. That's when I met him. He made some mean cherry coke. <laughs> Romance. <laughs> what a leaf. <laughs> Shady, can we do anything for you today? Oh, I am beyond help. Last week, I discovered the early stages of crow's feet. Honey, time marches on. <laughs> And pretty soon you'll realize it'll be marching right across your face. <laughs> <laughs> How do you feel, honey? Never better. Not enough. My annual Christmas cookies. Well, there she is. There's my girl. Oh, she was a happy one this morning. Oh, yes, I am. First day championship in eight years. Merry Christmas, Miss Clarice. Merry Christmas, darling. Oh, we were, uh, I'm sorry I'm late, I overslept. Oh, we can get back into town until 1 a.m. Yeah. <coughs> Jasmine, victory of the triathlon. <laughs> I heard you on the radio last night, Miss Clarice, you were wonderful. Oh. <laughs> what were you doing on the radio? Oh, they like me a bit of color announcer for the devils. I was fabulous, 
Too colorful for words. Oh, that was nice of him to let you talk on the radio. Nice nothing. I own the radio station. <laughs> you voted KPPT, the radio of choice for Chickabee oh. Parish. <laughs> Your hair looks beautiful today, Miss Corey. It makes you look younger. Oh, my hair might look younger, but my face is just as old. <laughs> oh. oh, thank you, and now. Oh, this cheese. There's a little bit of heaven right here on this earth. There is so much going on. State championship last night. Christmas festival today and the side single all tomorrow. <laughs> Life in the big city will spoil you. <laughs> Who won Miss Mary Christmas this year? Oh, my niece. Na Nancy Beth, of course. She was in this morning, 7 a.m. I, I had to position my tiara just perfectly so it wouldn't slip around during the parade. I have swayed her hair within an inch of its life. Why did I have to ask? I should know. All you Marmillions are gorgeous. Beauty's genetic in your family. No, oh, my niece, Nancy Beth, is a pretty girl, all right. You know she's Miss Merry Christmas, Miss Watermelon, and Miss Sawyer Bean. <laughs> I'm done with the post. Empty as a head, but where's the crown? <laughs> I will tell you, love, I think God did a little dance around that family. Oh, Drew was so successful. Belle does her own hair. The children are perfect. You know, they like the family on TV. I don't think they have a care in the world. That's not necessarily true. Mm -hmm. That's all I'm saying. I should have won Miss Merry Christmas the year I ran. My talent was very showy. Now, we told you at the time, Shelby. Fiber tongs are not everyone's cup of tea. <laughs> Mama didn't approve of my quarrel with fiber tongs. I just don't approve when you insist on being dangerous ladies. Mama hated those phrase that tongs. I never hated anything. I supported you. I just didn't watch you. Your father, on the other hand, he had a field day. He stood outside in that backyard for hours on end watching you practice. Standing there with a garden hose, waiting to put you out when you caught fire. <laughs> oh. the, the years that I've competed, yeah, your swimsuit section was my downfall. <laughs> <laughs> Most women look for a swimsuit that will lift and set free. I was looking for one to buy comfort. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've always been built for comfort, not speed. <laughs> My entire pageant ensemble was coordinated in shades of pink, soup to nuts. <laughs> well, we twirled, well, I twirled to the music of the white 5 oh. It was my pink song. Oh, we were so proud of her. <laughs> <laughs> Come on over, Clary, let's get back on hand. Oh, sure. oh, just spit! The parade doesn't start for four hours and there's already people parking on my lawn. It'll flood my grass. I'll hit a piece and let me hold. Oh, I hate out of town tourists. Hello, oh, Shelby, what are you doing here? <laughs> Just visiting, I guess. Oh, you have a good sense to get away from all this festival madness. I can't imagine why you want to drag yourself back here for a couple of firecrackers and some teenagers vomiting all over their shoes. <laughs> all right, Miss Weezer, I think you need a healthy dose of Christmas spirit. I have so much Christmas spirit, I could scream. Merry Christmas. Louisa, keep up the grass signs and not Christmas decorations. Up there, Porter and Holly. Oh, you made them, did you? With my own two hands. Oh, your presents back in the house. I haven't wrapped them yet. Oh, how's Red? Oh, he's good. In fact, he's the new poster dog for the Christmas festival. That, that is Red. Oh, I've never seen Red with so much hair. Mama, I have to go run some errands. But before I go, Miss Weezer, I made no friend of yours. Oh, Owen Jenkins? Oh, Owen oh, Jenkins, now there's a blast from the past. Do you remember him? He remembers you. Of course I remember him. He had the longest nose hairs in the free world. Well, he hardly has any hair anywhere anymore. <laughs> Owen oh, Jenkins, we got from Chickapin since God was a boy. I forgot he ever existed. Oh, well, now he lives in my room, that's the first vegetarian. He sings in the choir. Um, last week we were doing a special beautiful Mozart piece. We were, I was moved to tears. So he offered me his handkerchief and we got to talking. When he found out where I was from, he asked me if I knew him. And I said that 
Not only are you my neighbor, but your God was now killed my father on numerous occasions. Did you know he lived a very interesting life? He lived in Ohio somewhere, and his wife just died recently, and now he moved back down here. Does this story have a point? Not really. He just ran with you fondly, I think. I can't imagine why. I mean, I managed to run him off and marry the first of the two deadbeats that came along. I'm with private love, my favorite. Maybe sometime I could arrange for us all to get together. Maybe not. Why not? Look, Shelby, in just two decades, I managed to marry two of the most ungrateful men in the universe and then go on to have three of the most ungrateful children ever conceived. The only reason people are nice to me is because I have more money than God. Now, I'm not going to be opening up no can of worms. Do I detect negativity in your tone? <laughs> Lisa, if this is how you really feel, it's not healthy. You should come down to the mental guidance center. We're there to help. I'm not crazy. I've been just in a very bad mood for the last 40 years. <laughs> and then, I gotta go get them clothes. Uh, what would you like me to do with them? I'll just bring them in. Okay. And then I'm gonna go finish my Christmas shopping, Mama. I could just shoot you. I haven't even started. <laughs> Please, I haven't even marshaled the dishes from Thanksgiving yet. <laughs> what did you get your Mama? Well, I, I told her what part of it was this morning. Come on, now, Missy. Now, Faith, it's a secret. Oh, there ain't no secrets in this place. Good for you, honey. I'm gonna have a baby. Yes. <laughs> My little <laughs> grandma. <laughs> Come on, aren't you excited? Smile, it will increase your face value. June 21st. Oh, and, and those doctors said you couldn't have any children. Well, you show them. <laughs> the doctor said that children shouldn't have. There's a big difference. You showed us all, Shelby. I, I gotta go get them clothes. Miss Windsor, are you gonna bring your shrinky pies to our open house? Oh, I always. They'll be there. Oh, good. Well, so alone. I open the can of worms for you. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe she did that. Oh, James, after all these years. And I can't imagine I'll be very gracious under pressure. Shelby, Shelby. Her heart does get the best of her sometimes. I don't know if that's a good thing. My Lynn, this baby is not exactly great news, honey, is it? She wants it so bad. I don't know. Oh, honey, if I had words of wisdom, I would give them, but I don't. So let's just focus on the joy of this situation, honey. Come on now, congratulations. No, absolutely. Right. You're right. God has with healthy babies all the time. Well, it'll all be fine. Now, of course it will. Thank you, ladies. We'll get through this just fine. And you know what they say? What doesn't kill you makes you stronger. What is that girl up to? Oh, she'll be donating clothes to the poor. Oh, poor people like pink. <laughs> just say it, honey. Just put them on the counter. Oh, Miss Lynn, are you sure you don't want them? If your patients need them. No, no. When Shelby wants you to have them, and when Shelby says go, that is not true, Mama. Oh, Shelby, why do you always have to have the last word? I do not. Never 
children out? Oh, my brother can be a real hothead when he wants to be. But he didn't really kill Drew out of martial art. Marshall came up to my house while his daddy grew his art. Oh, I adore Marshall. Oh, we sat up half the night talking. <laughs> well, are you ready to see the new Shelby Lacherie? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> well, honey, you're going to have to sit down later because our world is full of reflective surfaces. I don't know why I'm getting all worked up over something silly as a haircut. You look precious. Okay. Without as much as I look and says, Hey, Mama and Daddy, I have something to tell you. I have a brain tumor and I have three months to live. Oh, no. Well, Drew Marshall, Drew the Belly came hysterical. And then he says, Hey, folks, I'm just kidding. I'm only gay. Well, hey, <laughs> <laughs> Marshall Drew and Bell. Or maybe she's praying because you and I are gossiping. 
them. Mm-hmm. Or maybe she's praying because the Alliance is shot in her tail. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, ever since Mardi Gras. Yeah, she had, she had a choice between going on a Bible weekend with her Sunday school friends or, or to New Orleans with me, as he would have said. <laughs> she left on the Friday at a well-adjusted young lady <coughs> and returned on the Tuesday a Christian. <laughs> what does her boyfriend say? Oh, Sammy. He don't know whether to scratch his watch or wind his hair. <laughs> he is crazy about her. I mean, he could deal with one other man, but he has difficulty dealing with the father, son, and the husband. <laughs> 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 that stuff makes me feel kind of creepy. Oh, Shelby, I'm torn. I, I don't understand these people. I, I don't know, but I have two sons that are going to hell in a handcuff. <laughs> I have a semi-daughter uh, who is striving to be the kind of girl that Jesus would bring home to his mama. <laughs> I don't know what to think. I, I don't understand these people, but they have a peace about them that I've never seen to have. <laughs> Maybe I'm just jealous. <coughs> Ah, oh, and Marshall is so thoughtful, he bought me this pen. Look, it's gold and enamel. It's a bug? Hush, it's fine, dear. Look, it's little eyes and rubies, my birthstone. <laughs> Does Marshall have any, you know, friends? Well, we talked about that. You know me, I'm such a nosy old fag. So I asked him how he met people. Because in my day and age, you could tell by a man's carriage and demeanor which side his bread was buttered on. But today, in this day and age, who knows? So I said to him, and I asked him, how can you tell? And he says, all gay men have track lines, and all gay men are called Mark, Rick, or Steve. Oh, oh track lines, I didn't know. <laughs> Monroe next week, and 
Next Friday. And we'd like to take you and Jackson out to dinner if we may. Oh, I can't next Friday. I'm sorry. But what's the occasion on? Well, I think this is going to sound a little silly, but we're going to the Lil' Theater. We have tickets to a play. No, you are going to New York? Well, I'm going to a play. <laughs> My sister, sister and I decided at the bridge one day that we needed to keep up. We want to uh, expose ourselves to a little more culture. That's not easy to come by in this neck of the woods. What are you exposing yourself to? Oh, I don't know something. Now, the last thing we saw that was pretty good, it was Shakespeare. Now, I was a little apprehensive at first, but, um, you know, when you get right down to it, he writes pretty straightforward stuff. Now, I have to admit, when they put those silly masks over their faces to fool people, that did get a little silly. Now, Sis fell for it, but I didn't. Sis Horrell is a dumbass. She thinks Sherlock Holmes is a subdivision. But anyway, we decided that we're going to go to see a theater trip to New York. I knew. I knew. Clay B, I'm green with Amber. I am green with Amber. You promised me, honey, you come straight back. I, I hear that if you work to Bloomingdale's, you, you can't help but get married. Please promise me you come back and tell me. Oh, hey, I will. But, but you know me. Well, they say you can't walk through without getting made up. Oh, uh -huh. <laughs> but yeah, we're only talking about it, not true. But you know me, I'm scared to death of getting on a plane. <laughs> oh, Clay Marie, it's a piece of cake, honey. Yeah, flying is safer than driving a car. You just sit in the rear. That, that's the safest place to sit for when it crashes. <laughs> <laughs> Miss Weezer, you should go to Long Road with Miss Clary. I'm not exposing myself to anything like that. You should broaden your horizons. You broaden your horizons your way, and I'll broaden them mine. Anyway, I've got plans on Friday. I'm going to Shreveport to have my color done. You know what? I'm going to have my color done. I'm going to find out if I'm spring, summer, winter, or fall. It's a present from Owen. What are you talking about? Well, everyone has a particular color. You're either spring, summer, winter, or whatever. They determine what color looks good on you. You know, what color suits your palette. And then it gives you fashion courage, you know. Well, that is the stupidest thing I've ever heard of. Well, it's all the rage. She's right. A lot of my friends in Monroe have had to. There is actually an article on that in any woman's day. I am the ultimate of women. You should have it done, Shelby. You're so fashion conscious. Oh, no, I'm too scared to. I might find out that pink is not on my palette. I don't think I could do it myself. <laughs> well, I have heard it all. I am going to the theater because I want to support the arts in our area. No, I write a check. I support art. I just don't want to watch it. It wouldn't hell if you, you know. Let's get one thing straight. I don't go to the theater because I can nap at home for free. I don't go to the movies because they're all full of trash and naked people. And I don't read books because if they're any good, they'll make them into a miniseries. <laughs> I'm surprised you and Daddy don't get along any better than you do. Miss Weezer, how are things at Owen? I tried to check up on you, but I haven't been able to lately. Oh, I enjoy his company <laughs> on occasion. Ladies. I can report that the show of Flora's delivery truck stops by her house at least twice a week. Oh, he knows I like fresh flowers. Oh, and I can report that there is a strange car parked in her garage at least once a week. Oh, my secret's out. I'm having an affair with a Mercedes Benz. <laughs> oh, Weezer, honey, forgive me, but I've been dying to ask, are you an old dude? <gasps> She'll be playing beat the clock. <laughs> <laughs> Just like her old dog, they both have trouble with the new tricks. <laughs> <laughs> no trace talking there, Marshall. Oh, I can't help it if men find me desirable. <laughs> <laughs> Shelby, when are you going to bring by that baby of yours? Oh, I brought a picture of him here. Look, I'll show you. Oh, he's a grown man, Bree. He's about 15 pounds now. Oh, he's a tiny little thing, isn't he? Well, the only way to buy him on a half when he was born, but He'll catch up, just give him time. Oh, bless his heart. They were some anxious hours, weren't they? 
He didn't know who to worry about most. You were that baby. Oh, well, I certainly wouldn't recommend having the baby three months premature. Oh, I get upset just thinking about it. Oh, well, then let's don't. Yep, Jeff Jr. is a fighter, and he's going to wear me out. I just wish I knew where he gets all that energy from. Well, now, honey, you don't try to do it all yourself. You got that husband of yours to help. Well, they're supposed to be helping out this decade. Oh, you know, he helps. Mama doesn't think so, but he does. Sometimes, when he thinks about it, which isn't very often. Actually, he doesn't really help at all. And most of the time, he's always off hunting. Oh, but he, he certainly is a good provider. Oh, yeah, that's true. Okay, honey, well, he'll come around. And when he does, I want you to march over to me and tell me how you accomplished it. <laughs> and I'll get to go on my soldier slug that I had with me. This one is pretty. Oh, private patient, my favorite. It, it, it's neither luscious nor sleazy. I love it. Oh, ladies, I, I just remember I have a little time adjustment that I had to make for this Saturday. I'm going to hear my lonesome our little nail is taking a well-deserved vacation. Oh, uh -huh. are you taking a trip or nail? Yes, I am. Aren't you gonna tell us where you're going? <laughs> no. Oh, please, Nail, I won't be able to get through the weekend without the situation. <laughs> You'll just make fun. Oh, you know how I love when you talk about your spiritual growth. I just can't get enough. <laughs> she has a nice little trip planned to camp Crossroads in the Ozarks. <laughs> camp Crossroads? Now, I don't think I know that place. Well, it's in Arkansas. It's a Christian camp. Oh, there's just cabins, a chapel, and a dining hall in the middle of the mountains of Little Lake. I'm going to spend a week in Bible study, prayer, and meditation. You're in the middle of nature, surrounded by the Lord. <laughs> Are there water beds there? Please, uh, leave her alone. Well, I'm just trying to find out about Camp cross I might want to go there sometime. Please, you have never done a religious thing in your life. I did so when I was at school. A bunch of us dressed up as nuns and went far high. <laughs> and now, is your boyfriend going? No, he said he'd rather eat dirt. <laughs> well, I'm off to the Episcopal Church to make sure my granddaughter is behaving herself. You know, this born-again business seems a bit tedious to me. Miss Weezer, and I hate to say this, but I worry about your faith sometimes. Oh, my faith is a fly. Look at my hair I put in my hair. <laughs> Weezer. Have you no shame? Oh, truly, it's fine. I love Miss Weezer. I pray for her every day, sometimes twice. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. Oh, Good morning. Hi. Jeff, Mama, don't say anything. I like it. It'll be so much easier to deal with. Oh, honey, bless your heart. It'll dry so quick, and all I have to do is run my fingers through it. I think the last time you had short hair was kindergarten. I know, but I decided today that I'm going to get all my hair cut off in 25 years. <laughs> I love it. I do. It's not too perky, is it? It's perfect. How you doing, Mom? Oh, I'm fine, Mama. How are you? Good. I bought you a little goodie. Oh, oh Malena. Malena, you must be really happy to have all your family home for the weekend. Mm -hmm. Yes, it's rare indeed. It has been nice. Was there any special reason? Just a get together. Last week was our anniversary. Well, why didn't you say something to her mom? I would have baked you something. You know how drum loves my nut surprise cake. Well, we never considered a major occasion before. Oh, which one is it? Thirtieth. Oh, that's a big one. What is the thirtieth anniversary? What do you mean? Well, you know, first anniversary is paper, twentieth is china, twenty-fifth is silver. Thirtieth must be value. <laughs> <laughs> My lady, what was Drum saying? He heard you say that. Nothing. Drum has no idea what Valium is. That man prides himself on never having any tension, which is amazing considering the amount of tension he's caused over the years. Oh, oh listen to me. I need to stop taking pot shots with Drum. He's a good man. Crazy, but a good man. He seems to be behaving himself lately, all right. I saw him in the Piggly Wiggly yesterday. He kind of caught me off guard and I smiled at him. <laughs> <laughs> the most bizarre things happen. Drum and I seem to be reasonably 
and we make the balls together in fun states. I don't know whether we bury them or we can blanket them. Used to be the thought of our parents being romantic made me and my brother sick to our stomachs. But it's actually kind of sweet. It, it's been a lovely week. Every now and then, Jim and I find these moments of magic. Oh, I don't know. I, I don't know if I'm lucky to have what I have or lucky to know what I have. Oh, no, that's way too deep for me. <laughs> I need to go get my ties or take it. Miss Weezer? Shelby, honey, you look a little pale. Oh, I'm fine. Now, ladies, remember this reminder. If you're out and about this afternoon, stop by the Dixie Plaza Shopping Center. The radio station is sponsoring a summer fiesta with lots of prizes and a live band. They call themselves Single Bullet Theory. Honey, what have you been doing to yourself? It doesn't hurt. I, I, what have you done? Marlene, have you seen this? Yes, I have. The doctor's just been trying to strengthen my veins. They're in terrible shape. Shelby, it looks like you've been driving nails into your arms. What's going on here? Is Shelby terrible, Mama? I guess so. No point in keeping it a secret any longer. Shelby has been driving nails into her own. <laughs> it's my dialysis. What? Dialysis. It's when I know what it is. Please tell us what's going on, honey. Well, you're all talking like this is something. This isn't something. Don't look at me like that. How long has it been going on? Oh, well. Couple of months. Marilyn Eatonton, I'm without words. Why haven't I been told? Well, you know, sometimes we've just decided that we just don't want to talk about things. But what would have been the point? There's nothing you could have done. But we could have done something. I just can't believe you didn't say anything. Now, this is selfish. This is so selfish of both of you. Oh, come on, Dave. No, you're talking like this is something. This isn't something. Hey. Hey. Jack Jr. put too much strain on my kidneys and now they're kaput. That's all. That's all. That's all she says. Oh, I'm responding beautifully to dialysis. Do I look bad? No, honey, you look, you look beautiful. Well, maybe you, you're going to let us know what's going to happen next. Oh, how long do you have to do that? Well, there have been people on dialysis that have been waiting in years. That must be agony. Oh, well, not really for me. They stay on dialysis for about a few years, but I'm lucky I don't have to wait any longer. Because, well, Mama's going to give me one of her kidneys. When? When? Go check in tomorrow morning. You are giving Shelby a kidney tomorrow and you didn't even mention it? Truly, can you do my hair? Oh, oh, I'm a bit of a rush. I, I don't ever think there's been a time that words have failed me. Why do you I think this is a good we just told you. We haven't known that long. We were only tested last week, and I'm the closest match. What do you mean, match? Well, there are four categories for organ match, and I match the best. Categories? Oh, you got swimsuit, evening gown, tail, oh, and personality. I <laughs> know Yankee you thought had a small ass. We were all very upset here. Yeah. I'm so far past upset. Oh, I'm sorry. That's Tommy's joke. I find it kind of funny. <laughs> Marlene, no wonder your whole family's in town. Oh, look, I am just relieved it was me. The boys are young. I wouldn't want them to go through this. And who would want one of Joe's meal organs anyway? <laughs> and the best thing about this is, through the test and stuff, I have discovered that I have a constitution seven ten years younger than you. How about that? It's so painful. It was not really for me. My surgery's simple, but Mama's they basically have to sew her in half to get the kidney out. It's major, major surgery for her. They have to sew you in half. <laughs> they do it all the time on the surface of the stars. Oh, this is no laughing matter. Oh, wait, it's going to get smaller. They have to take out my body ribs to get to my kidney. Oh, it is sure she had her ribs removed to make a smaller waist. Oh, please, that would have died her mind. Look, Shelby, this morning when I said about this body packing in on you, you know better than to take any notice of what I say. Miss Weezer, forget it. Oh, I'm a terrible person. No, you're not, Weezer. Now, you give your dog a kidney if you need him one. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Tell you, it just seems so calm and collected. I'm happy. Look at the opportunity 
I have. Most mothers only get one chance to give their child life. I did too. I think it's me. And she'll be able to to run around after that rat milk she killed all this. I've got two kidneys. I only need one. I'm just glad we're going to get it over with before it gets too hot. Oh, ain't that the truth? <laughs> I'm going to postpone my vacation a day so I can sit with your husband during the surgery. I can get sodas and things. And I'll make sure Joe has enough food. Oh, and don't worry a thing about your house, and we will take care of everything. Oh, look, I appreciate that, lady. And I know Drum does, too. Oh, you are so brave. You are both so very brave. Oh, you know, Shelby, if I didn't know any better, I would never said you were sick a day in your life. Oh, and now, that is the biggest compliment anyone has ever paid me. No, no, don't say that. I have my baby. I am very happy. If this is part of the price I have to pay, then I have to pay it. And I can deal with that. Now, if I'm not mistaken, somebody has a present to open. <laughs> is this for me? <laughs> the only thing where is that for? I can take it in. Can I? <laughs> of course you can, honey. It's just something small I picked up at the sale. Oh, oh, ladies, will I look fabulous. Oh, God bless you, Shelby. <laughs> You're going to be the prettiest girl in my house. Oh, hi, how about me? You bring me better company than us. Shelby, I'll be sitting by your side when you wake up. Used to, my love. I'll manage it somehow. Mm. And I'll keep drawing cab during the operation. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we are in such great hands. <laughs> Mama, you're going to be a while, so I'm going to go back to the house and spend some more time with Daddy. Oh, good. Joe's not taking this very well. He's being so emotional at the least bit of pain. Truthy, this is probably going to gross you out, but will I be able to keep my hair? Is that too repulsive? Oh, no, honey. People do it all the time, but those nails are wet, so I'm going to just aim at keeping it and put it in a box and give it to Mama. I love you all. Miss mm. Chloe, would you do something for me? Oh, sure, honey. Next time you're talking to Drew and Belle, I know they're upset about Marshall and all, but can you tell them I said that if it's the most <coughs> repulsive thing that they've ever gone through, they should just get over it? I'll tell them today. Now, bye, ladies. Bye, bye. 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 Truly, why isn't my radio playing? Just give it a whack. <laughs> Cold for this time of year. I'm going right away. Oh, I don't like it one bit. It makes me turn blue. And blue is not my color. Anne Boleyn had six fingers. Who's Anne Boleyn? Anne Boleyn. She was one of the six wives of Henry VIII. What are you talking about? She had six fingers. And what happened to the other four? <laughs> she had 11 toes. Says here in this article that Anne Boleyn had six fingers on one edge and that made her dresses so the sleeves hung down to her fingertips so she wouldn't look weird. 
I can see Reader's Digest is a little useful source of information. Can I read? I mean, I just, I think you're just so helpful. Thank you so much, Mask Off, Francis Lynn. I think it really changes up in this outfit. Honey, the only thing that separates us from the animals is our ability to accessorize. <laughs> I just love my French perfume. I just want to spray it all the time. I just love when the smell fills the air. Well, honey, don't waste it because that stuff ain't cheap. Yeah, save it, babe. I was burning our clothes now. <laughs> just so thoughtful of you to remind us all. Oh, honey, I had a ball shopping. I don't care what anyone says. The French people are very nice. And most of them have a courtesy to speak English. <laughs> And her voices too. I, I may want to ball the bag sometime. You know, don't you? You don't lie, do you? <coughs> I do. It's a busy print and it hides the dog hairs. <laughs> My feet are like two blocks of ice. Hmm. This tastes like it was made in a rubber tire. Has anybody seen her this morning? I haven't, and I went straight to the house when I got in. But only the boys were there. I doubt it. I'll say I heard the rest of our night. Who knows what's on our minds? But I just want you to be here in case you need something. Oh, Trudy, I'm, I'm so glad you're over today. How are the boys? Oh, they're as well as can be expected. And my husband and I are bringing over some barbecue to them later. Oh, I have never seen so much food. Oh, but you can never have enough at times like these. My husband's at home cooking up a storm. He really thinks his red beans and rice is going to make everybody feel better. Maybe he's right, honey. Maybe that's why they call it soul food. I'm going to get his place. Oh, you'll have to ask him. Sammy always runs me off when he starts cooking. That kitchen is so tiny, he gets scared he's going to hit me in the stomach with a spatula. <laughs> when are you moving in there? Next month. Oh, you had to remind me. I just can't, I just can't believe she's moving away now. I'm going to be a sin I blame her. It's just down the street, Truby. A hop, skip, and a jump. Well, that apartment is so squash. Me and Sammy have to step outside to change our minds. <laughs> you must be toying with me. A lady, not at all. I guess it just me the old man. Oh, Truby. Well, thanks, oh, honey. You can miss him if he were gone. You know, yesterday, he actually got up off the couch. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I asked him, I said, like, why, why? And he said, let's go out to eat. Well, after I came to, <laughs> I said, why? I thought that dinner could have been preempted. <laughs> It seems he might be getting a job for, for the electrical contractor for the new college library. I'm not supposed to tell anyone else. I know it's a huge We're called Clary. Young parents are oh, perfectly beautiful. I ate way too much. Oh, don't hang on. She'll be ready. I like them. Marilla. This special program and today I had Jonathan go down to the radio station and pull some music Shelby would have liked. And they're gonna play it until noon. Oh, it's all right. I think you might be surprised at some of the stuff you're gonna hear. Oh, that's okay, it's for Shelby. Oh, Melinda, tell us what you need to hear. Okay, Truly, do you think it's worth a little magic? My hair looks like it's been sent out with a load. Okay, so you just give me two minutes. I'm going to get my wand, my baby dust, and I'm going to be over to you. So you take a seat, honey. How are you doing? Oh, I'm fine. I'm a little worried about drug. The boys got in last night, and I'm not sure how they're doing. Jackson is desperate. He's got a chance for it. Jack Jr., I have to say, it's hard to solve when your baby's running around the house. Melinda, I understand myself. Wasn't Shelby fine when I left? He 
Let's talk about it. The bicycle. And uh, when the track can't fight it, they put her back on dialysis. You mean dialysis? Oh, yeah. She's been doing fine for the past couple of months. And last Monday, it all went wrong. Last domino. And I saw it like the fix it with a little surgery. And so they brought her down. She said, Mama, I want to feel so good. I want to feel so good. I gave her the anesthetic. In a way, she was right. <laughs> Maybe she knew she was going to be with her king. Maybe so, and I don't get it. We should be rejoicing. You go ahead. <laughs> I wish I could feel that way, but I think it's selfish like that is for her to have her here. Well, Mr. Mayor, I didn't mean to upset you by saying that. It's just that when something like this happens, I prayed very hard to make heads or tails of it. Miss Shelby Kate, I think she wanted to take care of you, that baby, of everybody. Her poor body was just worn out. You know, Shelby, she, she would be on us to get mired down and wallow in this. She'd see this and, and allow it to give her courtesy. We just have to get on with the best way we know how. That's what my mama said. But I wish Shelby could feel that for my mama. Tommy said that you didn't leave her side. Oh, no, I'm going to play French. I couldn't leave my Shelby. Very endless. Both the boy. Really difficult work. I had to die at the job. Really difficult work. Shelby, Shelby was the reason I could have gone home the morning I had. I was thinking about that when I sat there when she said I called you. I work her arms and her legs to try to keep the circulation going. I tell the ICU nurse we were doing our jam bond. Just sat there, pushing, like I always did where Shelby was concerned. Hoping she would sit up and argue with me. But we finally realized that it was all over. My past. I, I didn't know how I was going to get through the next few minutes of my maternal. Joe couldn't take it. He left. Jack he couldn't take it. He left. He struck me as a midman. An old man. Or supposed to be named Stephen. As a woman, how lucky I was. I was there when that wonderful creature was driven into my womb. And I was there when she drifted out. 
had those insides to do with. But your hair is holding up beautifully. <laughs> Did you hate the two of you three before? No, I did it myself. Oh, well, hold on, Missy. I just want to hear that kind of talk. <laughs> My old hair was so off. I didn't know anything about a bagger. Wait, I'm just going to fix up the rough patches and you make a beautiful job. In fact, I'm going to be looking for a, a temporary assistant when a male goes on maternity leave. Are you interested? With all that was going on, and I didn't know whether at the time or feel like coming here, but. Chilled closet in my bag. All our privileges. That's it. That's the way. Hold two hands. I better go. Sure, he's up there now, showing her around and 
fixing the speeding tickets. <laughs> she had done the quick sand he walked on. You know what? And I'm sure he was happy to see a familiar face. My husband was a Louisiana politician and them, and we don't know many people that went to heaven. <laughs> <laughs>
start off, um, obviously the last two years everything has stopped and I'm thrilled to be back. But I'm really thrilled to bring back a new little tradition that Jack Cunningham Productions brought in um, just before COVID happened. Um, it's literally just a little recognition for me just to say a big thank you. But we do call it the Best Performer Award. And luckily tonight we do have our previous winner in the house. So Jenny, would you come up onto the oh, stage? Yeah. Thank <laughs> you. 